Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the weekly Amazon QuickSight learning series, where you will learn about new product functionalities, feature launches, as well as best practices and tips on how to improve your user experience and gain technical knowledge from our excellent team of solutions architects and product managers. In today's session, we'll talk about Population Health Dashboard on Amazon Health Click done by um, using Amazon QuickSight. It will be presented by our solutions architect, Yaya Dagnoko, who's part of the Healthcare and Life Sciences team. Before we start our presentation, I would just like to quickly walk you through our QuickSight community. Amazon QuickSight community is a one-stop shop for your BI journey. I highly recommend you to sign up for that using the information I'll be sharing right now. You'll be able to uh, explore a lot of good learning content on the community as well as ask questions for any issues, bugs or um, blocks you are having while developing your dashboard or trying to uh, execute a task. You can uh, sign up on the community using this barcode or the link, which is community.amazonquicksite.com. Um, apart from the learning content, you will have information on different learning events which happen, such as this learning series itself. But also we have other valuable events uh, which you can see on the screen. First Fridays, we have a talk on the new features Second and third Wednesdays, we have Immersion Days for Americas. The third Wednesday, we have Immersion Day for Europe. And fourth Thursdays of the month, we have live Q&A, which is this week, by the way. So if you have not already done, please take a moment to sign up for the community. Now, for the learning series, we will be taking the questions on the community and we use a particular tag for our experts to identify that this question is specific to this session, what will happen today and prioritize answering that. So the tag for this session is QLS hyphen health lake. So please use this tag when asking your questions. And I will also uh, in a moment show you how to go to the community to ask the questions. Before I do that, I'll answer one of the most common questions we get. Yes, this session is being recorded and we will post the recording very soon on the QuickSight community as well as our YouTube channel. Now let's take a quick moment to see how to ask questions on the QuickSight community. Once you land on community.amazonquicksite.com, you'll see the home page and you can access the Q&A section using a couple of options. You can scroll down and click on this style or at the top in categories, click question and answer. On the question and answer page, you need to select new question. Then type in your question, whatever you have. Use the corresponding tag, which in this case is QLS hyphen health lake. And then describe what you want to ask. And post the question using new question. So it's pretty simple, just like this. I'll discard it for now, but you can post your questions when you want to ask. Okay, now let's get back to the session where Yaya will walk you through the work he and his team did. Thanks again for 
attending uh, our session on the population health with Amazon Health Lake demo project. So my name is Yaya Dagnoko, and I'm a solutions architect in healthcare and life science uh, uh, team. So I work uh, I work pr primarily uh, with our healthcare and life science customers and help them solve their business problems with Amazon uh, uh, tools, uh, Amazon tools and services. So on, on the agenda today, we'll talk about what other challenges that all healthcare pr practitioners are facing. Then we'll talk about what solutions that our healthcare organization have, uh, uh, you know, really have to propose uh, for 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 those for 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 those uh, challenges. Then we'll talk about the actual project. I'll give you a quick background, including the reference architecture. Then we'll start the demo. So the demo will have two sub part. So I'll quickly show you the first two dashboards, then spend a little more time on the third one, which seems to have the more impact with our customers. Then we'll have uh, a Q&A and, and, some, some, uh, and share some resources. So what do we hear from, from the industry? When we talk about healthcare today, patients walk around with thousands of data points, but it's difficult to make to, to make those data points actionable and have a good uh, uh, have a good re, uh, have a good uh, re, 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 uh. Once we talk about the healthcare today, patients walk around with thousands of data points, but it's very difficult to make those data points actionable and have a good measurable result. And anyone within the healthcare industry today knows very well about the data silos. So you have data in the hospital, you have data in this network, you have data in this clinic, and you go to the doctor, you'll ask you'll you'll be asked to you'll you'll be asked to provide the same information uh, 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 one, one more time. And as we know the data is not shared. A lot of information about what's happening with the patient is on structures. It's usually combined with clinical notes that get stored in an EMR or an, or, or an EHR. And once you're in those clinical notes, unless somebody reads them, you can't use it to make an actual decision with the system we have today. So, and as always, for the last point, the skills and resources are constrained to help address these, these problems. So, and also the priorities in healthcare are also evolving. There's a lot about, uh, uh, there, there, there is a lot of discussions about uh, uh, equitable health, right? We need a full view of our patients. You can call it the longitudinal patient record or a 360 view of the patient. How do we have the full view of the patient? Not just what they told the what 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 not just what they told the doctor, but what's going on in their life. So what can you get from a medical device? What if they're wearing a watch? So once you have all this data, we how we can shorten the we can shorten the cycle, the amount of time uh, the amount of time required to take this data, create an insight that actionable and actually allow our, care, our caregivers, the providers, the social workers to take an action in a meaningful amount of time. So there is continuous pressure to gather more and more data, right? And respond quickly with this data. And as a result, our medical professional, the nurses and the doctor have to spend more time recording the information and as a result, spend less time with a patient uh, providing care. So this, this goes after uh, to, to the solutions. So we actually have used most of the services that you see here on the screen uh, for, 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 for our project. So if we talk about the US market, they are HIPAA eligible meaning that you can use them to create solutions that will meet the regulations and the laws that are relative to HIPAA compliance. So for, so for, 
For example, we have transcribed medical. This can take text, you can take a speech and convert it to text. And it has several different models that can be used uh, the based on the context, whether it's a general practitioner or uh, on the uh, oncology. Then we have Amazon recognition, which can take a look at an image, extract the text, and you can use that text. So you can also classify the text. Is it PHI, personal health? Uh, is, it, is it personal health uh, information? And what do we want to do with it is to abstract and to encrypt. Then we have the comprehend medical, which take, uh, has an input text, a clinical note. You extract the meaning of that text, which are the, the different entities, and what are the items within them and also create a relationship between, between the data. And we have uh, Amazon HealthLake, which is the primary focus of our discussion today, which is a clinical data store for your health-related data. And finally, we have SageMaker that you can use to take all this information to build and train any model that you would like to use. So what's HealthLake? So the, the the goal of HealthLake is to to unlock to to unlock the to unlock the potential of your healthcare data at scale, right? Is there to store your clinical data in a common data model in a well-known schema, which is called Fire version R4? It it helps extract the meaning of our, of our instructor data by integrating with services like Comprehend Medical, and is there to drive your downstream analytics. Speaking of the analytics stack, and that's the theme of our session today as well, uh, what does it look like? So you're going to bring your, your structure and your structured and unstructured data, you feed it into HealthLake, and even though you have the SQL query, you still have other APIs. And uh, talking about APIs, you have multiple APIs, and the fire being one, the being one of them. And lake formation, if you're if you're uh, familiar with using lake formation to create your data lakes, this allow health lake, uh, this allow your health lake data store to be part of the overall data lake, and you use a Fina query engine to access that data. So within Jupyter Notebook. You can use the Python library that support Athena query engine to access your data and create your data frames. Also, you create you can create a data source in, in QuickSight through Athena to provide a, a custom SQL query, extract the data you need from, 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 uh, from HealthLake and build your dashboard. So that really lends well to our project, talking about our project and what we worked on. So the so how did the how did the project uh, start about is the initial ask was from the public sector to provide population health information, and working backward from the public sector to the private sector to the provider and walking all the way to the patient. So it starts at the most granular level at the patient level and goes all the way up. So that's why it was super. Uh, it was it was a, it was a super rewarding project to be part of. So the population demo health goal is to show the ease and simplicity of using health health like analytics and quick side to drive the population health and shift the patient from treatment to interventions. So here's a quick uh, uh, reference architecture. This is this is a contribution from the technical field to the go-to-market source uh, uh, pro project. We started to think about how do we help our sellers, the field colleague, how to start the conversation where with the technical folks on the on the customer side, especially those who are builders. So they have the knowledge of AWS. It's either an ISV or an SI partner who want to develop the population health uh, solutions. So I'll describe the data pathway. So if you check going from, from left to right, 
the data lives in many cases outside the customer or the partner environment. So we need to have a robust system to support data interoperability. So from data ingestion using various type of using various type of connectors. So we have data types such as HL7, Fire, and also we, we also support the non-structure and the semi-structured data. By bringing all the data in and normalizing into a common data platform, we unlock the potential of the data. And in order to do so, we, we are proposing some component that can help the customer build, build them themselves using the different services and uh, uh, the, the different services and technology uh, that we have here on AWS. So you'll see an item four, five, and six. So moving from from enter uh, from enter operability, now that we have the data in environment, meaning the AWS environment, we can build on purpose built a, 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 a platform such as Amazon Health Lake and a variety of other services that allow the customer to build the population health solutions to help normalize, catalog, and make it con consumable. Then the main goal is actually to move from 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 uh, to, to move from treatment to 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 the intervention uh, phase. So has so uh, in in one sentence, move as fast with the data as possible. And also, we have a lot of uh, we we have several uh, uh, the, the, we have several downstream uh, tools, and you'll see a quick quick site here on the on the item nine. So the the project kicked off in November of last year by the HealthLake team, and they did it for this for the sales enablement people. And right after they came up with a strategy, and that's uh, how we got uh, 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 contacted. And from that offsite meeting, they came up with a model. So they wanted to create the Pop Elf demo, a reusable demo that can be leveraged across the 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 uh, the, the 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 insurance uh, pro provider, the service providers, the hospital, and the patients. So the tricky part that that they, the, it was that they really wanted to build all of that into one dashboard across all those per personas. But after several brainstorm, we decided to split uh, across three different dashboards. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So what's the purpose of all of this? So from a public sector, the goal is to use a mix of objective and, and uh, and the, the mix of uh, objective and subjective data to assign risk level to patients to allow the providers to assure resource planning, both from hospital and insurance uh, point of view in a private sector, or, or have a vaccine administration in a public sector. Though that's, those are kind of uh, the, those are the, those are the different cases that, that, that the team wanted to work on. So we designed those dashboard and those are the screenshot. Of course, we, we uh, I'm gonna take you uh, to the console and, and really show you what the dashboard looks like. But again, uh, we, we designed the dashboard to go from the strategic level to the tactical level to the operational views. So the patient the so, so the patient records, we can attach it to the operational level because it's at a granular level. Then we have the longitudinal medical record, also called the patient uh, 360. So that's actually it's it's at the tactical level. Then at the uh, at the uh, stra strategic level, we have the the risk uh, uh, stratification. Now let's go to the demo. What you see here it's, it's, um, is a demo central. That's the final version of our dashboard. This is, this is where uh, we, we, we publish uh, our dashboard. So the first one you see here is the is a risk uh, stratification dashboard. So it's based on ASCVD. So ASCVD is a 
cardiovascular cardiovascular disease. So that takes account uh, an history of, of, of ASCVD and, and data point as a cholesterol level, the blood pressure, the blood glucose level, and the smoking status. So you'll see here breakdown by, by risk. So we go to low, to intermediate, high, on the borderline, and the unknown. So you have a breakdown of the population as well by race and what are the what what are the the, the patient that are uh, that are smoking will, will have uh, hypertension and other uh, and and really other with really other uh, uh, data points. So also you have a map. So this map gives you the location of the different risk, you know, by by type of population. Then you have a you have a longitudinal medical record. So the, the longitudinal medical record gives you a little more details at the patient level. So from from the condition to the allergy to the encounter and the observation. So right there, when the you know uh, when when the practitioner comes to the screen, it has an overview of what the interactions with the patient uh, was. From the start of why they start on when they started seeing the so starting seeing the the patients until now. So for the case of this demo, we went with seven or eight names, and every time you click a name, the patient picture changes and gives you all this information about the patients. Then we move to the to to the care gap. So that's the CMS one. That's the CMS uh, one one twenty five and. We wanted to put a uh, we wanted to put together a dashboard that can demonstrate some quality measures. This specific quality measure, the CMS 125 breast cancer screening, um, it's it's a it's it's a quality measure that the provider use. So the whole point of the of, of a quality measure is to incentivize certain be, be, certain uh, behavior by a provider. So what it does is it looks at different types of clinical data points and determines if the patient is on a numerator or in a denominator. And again, I will explain what being in a what being in a numerator or being in a denominator is. So to 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 really have a grasp of what this dashboard does, I want to give you a little background. So we will start with this website here, and I will pull the link. Uh, on the chat, or we will share. We will we'll also share. We'll also share the link for 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 for, for this website. It's the healthit.gov. So what you see here, it's uh, it, it it's a description of the rule. So it tells you in basic English what the rule is. For uh, you know you uh, you you see uh, has a description. We'll we'll see the initial uh, the 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 initial but population are women 51 to 74 with the of uh, 51 to 74 of age with the visit during the measurement period and the measurement period is usually a year so for for this project we took one year uh from december to january 2022 and on the numerator those are those are the those are the actual women who had a mammogram during the 24 month uh, 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 prior to the end of the measurement period. Then we have the denominator. So the denominator equal the initial population. Also, you'll hear me uh, re refer to it as an IPP. So that's that's another term for, 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 for it. And it's, it's actually faster. So those are those are the those 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 are really the different rules that we have here. So um, how we can determine looking at the clinical data if the patient had a mammogram or, or not. So if you go here on the specification data elements, of course you have a specification here. So those are additional information that you can download in order to, to write your own rule or if you want to have a custom rule. Then you have the value set, right? So a value set, it's a code that added context. You can think of it some sort of a metadata. 
So if we look at the value set for, for CMS 125, we're getting all of those. Uh, so yeah, if you if if you if, if if you take a look for for the value set for CMS one one twenty five, you go to the mammography here. All those codes are related to the mammogram. So that gives you uh, how do you write your SQL queries to make sure that you know the the uh, the, the 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 patient came for a mammogram. This is how you know it. Let's get back. To, to the dashboard. So again, as I explained, the initial uh, population or IPP was women aged from 50 to, to 74 year old uh, who, who, had, uh, who had a mammogram visit uh, in a measurement period. So in here, we have the initial population, right? And then you have, you, you, you have the population that require an outreach. So those are the population that are part of the initial uh, the, the initial uh, population, the IPP, but hasn't come for 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 a breast cancer screening. So right there, you have the first actionable data. So the practitioner, of course, have the name of those people. So what's going to happen is. Is going to call those those different names and say, "Hey, uh, you have to come for 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 a mammogram exam." And what's going to happen is one day come and do the mammogram e exam and and uh, I guess other tests. They will move over to the numerator. And if you remember, we talked about the numerator as those who completed one or more mammogram exam during the measurement period. So those are the patients who are in adherence with our rules. So the goal is the, of, of uh, our practitioner is to score high. So if you have uh, an initial population or IPP, uh, let's say 100 patients, you want 100 patients on, on the numerator. That's how you know how good of a job you do. So for it has an instance, if you have one on the numerator and 100 on your IPP, you know that you're doing a uh, you know a really bad job or really, uh, or, or, or or a really lousy job in that specific measure. Then uh, you you have here the you have here the the score. So the score is calculated um, as the initial population IPP over the people over the patient that are required for outreach. So uh, in our case is seven uh, is 10 over four is, is 10 over 42 and that gives you an adherence of 24%. Then we, we talk about the, the the value set. So those are the value sets here. you know we downloaded all of those. And by the way, all of those data are coming from from uh, from, 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 from 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 Amazon uh, uh, from the Amazon Health Lake. So we really downloaded all of this. I just wanted to really give you a deep dive on this dashboard because from our field colleagues, that's the, that's the dashboard that have a little more impact with our customers. So that's the end of this demo. But in this demo, I just want to show you, I'm going to tell you exactly what we saw. So we started uh, with, the risk, uh, uh, with the risk stratification dashboard. We moved over uh, to the longitudinal medical records. Then we did a, a little more deep dive on, on the care gap. And I really showed you around and how we got the data, how the calculation, uh, 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 and how the calculation was, was done. So this will this will uh, conclude the demo. We'll go back to the to the actual slide for 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 the various. For, for 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 the resources. There you go. So for additional resources, you have here that's the actual dashboard. That's that's the one you see here. Then we have the workshop. The workshop that really helps you go through this 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 specific uh, 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 use case that takes you from from how to upload the data into FLake 
and going to Athena to build the custom queries and upload the data uh, into QuickSight. Then uh, you have a blog. You know, we have different blogs that, that we wrote. We have the algorithm for, for the risk, you know, how to assign risk to different patients. Then we have a health IT.gov portal that I showed you. And then we have another workshop uh, 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 as well that add uh, a couple of more co components to it. So with that, I'd like to say thank you. Thanks, thanks for being here and back to you. Thank you, Yaya, for this nice presentation. It was very insightful on how to particularly work with healthcare data. Uh, before we end, um, quick uh, call outs on the upcoming learning series session, which you can sign up on our community. Next week, we'll have two sessions. One uh, is a session specifically designed for our developers, where we'll walk through all the different learning so resources we have for our developers. And then Thursday, we'll have a session on uh, enriching your web application using data analytics with Amazon QuickSight. Other than the learning series, um, this week we have some exciting events which are upcoming. So Wednesday in New York, we have the AWS Summit. So if you are in the region, please, uh, hopefully you will be attending that. And we have our QuickSight folks also present there. So please do say hi if you drop by. And on Thursday, we have a boot camp on no code machine learning pipelines. Um, that will start at 8 a.m. Pacific time, which is 5 p.m. Central European time. There are other events as well, which you can look on the event section on our community. Thank you all for your, uh, your time today with us. Uh, please give your feedback so that we can improve our sessions going forward and stay in touch. Goodbye.